The Modern Slavery Act is now law in Australia. If you're doing major business here, you have to show what you're doing to ensure your supply chain is free from slavery. So what exactly do you have to do? And while we're at it, why is this even necessary? Over 40 million people work in conditions that look like slavery. They get paid nothing or nearly nothing, and they can't quit or escape abuse because of threats, force or coercion. That's modern slavery. It takes forms like forced labour, human trafficking and debt bondage. The slaves that I've met are often so desperately poor and somebody's approached them with the offer of a better life. And of course, as soon as they take that job, that offer just doesn't materialise. They find themselves in a situation where they can't leave and they're being exploited with little to no pay. So they're coerced to stay there. We often see that wherever there is extreme vulnerability, there is someone out there willing to exploit that vulnerability. Two thirds of these people are at work in the Indo-Asia Pacific, our backyard, and the products and services from their labour are coming into Australia through supply chains. Whenever a business purchases a product or service, it's at risk of supporting slavery in its supply chain. Maintaining competitive advantage leads some businesses to explore cheaper options, but at what cost? Australian businesses are at risk of importing 12 billion US dollars worth of products which may have used slavery in their production. So the reason why we should care about eliminating slavery is that it's just simply wrong. It's illegal, it's immoral, it's unethical, and yet many companies in Australia, I'd venture to say all companies in Australia, are probably procuring goods and services of some kind or another where slavery was involved in the manufacture of those goods. It's just not good enough. While every country we trade with has some laws against slavery on the books, they're not always up to the task of addressing it. The laws can be inadequate or not properly enforced, or they lack the resources to sufficiently monitor operations. And corruption makes everything worse. As a business, you don't want any part of your products to be made by slave labour, whether it's at your supplier or their supplier or a supplier before them. Your customers feel the same way. They don't care whether you own the factories that made the product. They just want to know that the workers are being treated fairly, just like we expect in our own workplaces. If it was your little girl, your little boy, that was being abused in the way that they are, you would do anything you could do to release them from that. And it's our job as a privileged, rich country to be able to offer that to other countries that don't have the luxuries that we have. It is our job to be able to solve this problem. The Act will require changes to be made. We can learn from others who have already begun their journey. When we started hearing about the concerns and the risks in our supply chain with both slavery and environmental damage, we wanted to take the path of certification. We felt that certification offered us the best opportunity to give those people supplying us the fairest and strongest outcomes in their communities. When we decided to go down the certification path, everyone got on board really easily. It was a values-driven decision, and everyone loved the opportunity to make a better contribution to our supply chain. I think you've got a little window of time now where um, consumers are giving us grace to be able to get this right. But because of media and because of all the amazing organisations planted around the world that are fighting this problem, Consumers are becoming more and more aware and I believe that every human being was created to do good. And so when they are now educated that the products that they were buying may not be actually benefiting the people and in fact they're part of the problem, people want to change. And therefore, we now need to be able to change in the way we produce. A solid brand reputation can, in a moment, be brought into question by a media story of slavery in supply chains. If you don't really know what's going on there, your reputation is on the line. So now that we have uh, an Australian Modern Slavery Act that will compel companies to go and look at their supply chains, or it's estimated that would apply to the 3,000 largest companies, there are going to be discussions in those organisations about what if we find slavery? or what happens when we find slavery. And I've always made the statement that I would rather be on the front page of the Australian Financial Review as somebody coming out and saying, we went 
we looked, we shone a light, and we found slavery, and this is what we're doing to eliminate it, rather than being on the front page of the Financial Review, because an investigative journalist said, we went and looked into the operations of Conic Minolta, and we found modern slavery. More and more, investors want to be sure that companies know what they're doing in the area of ESG. Investors have found that companies with strong ESG metrics are also strong performers overall. I think many of our clients are also very interested in this topic. They want to know how their, how their money is invested. So under the Modern Slavery Act here in Australia, we will likely have to report on the portfolios. So we'll need to demonstrate how the companies we invest in, how they identify the risk of slavery but also we need to demonstrate what we've done about it in terms of engaging with companies on, on, on risk mitigation. In this age, people are looking beyond paychecks to find purpose in their work. Companies that act with integrity attract more talented people. What we found is that there was a huge groundswell of support from, from all of our team members, all of the people that worked in the company, supporting our efforts to engage with our suppliers to ensure that the goods and services that we bought here in Australia were free of modern slavery, were, were free of human rights abuses. And we've done engagement surveys that have shown that staff engagement has gone up dramatically. People stop me regularly in the coffee queue or the, the lunchroom or the car park or whatever and talk to me about how proud they are that um, a, a profit-making technology company um, owned by, largely by shareholders in Japan would really take seriously uh, eliminating human rights abuses from any aspect of its operation. You can potentially, I think, make more profit if you are doing the right thing and encouraging others to do the right thing. Uh, if you are doing things more ethically, uh, I think over the, over the longer term, you will make more profit and you will, um, you will benefit consumers globally as well by lifting people up out of their situations and creating that global wealth that we need to bring people out of poverty. Governments are making it the law that businesses take action against modern slavery, not just in Australia, but in most major markets. To operate there, managing the risk in your supply chain is becoming the price of admission. The reasons we should do that are not just moral and ethical considerations, but they're, they're also considerations around uh, company law in Australia. There's a massive, massive risk for every company in Australia who is complicit in this insidious crime of modern slavery. And every board in Australia should be discussing at a board level the risks associated with their organisation continuing to condone slavery. Working with suppliers to prevent slavery means closer collaboration. This drives other business improvements. Closer ties help you find quality suppliers and push them to the next level. By tackling social issues within our Sea Change Sustainability Program, we can show that we're being transparent in our approach and that we're putting people at the heart of our business. It's not only good for the business, it's good for the people who work for our business, but also it's good for the people who work in our supply chains because nobody wants to work for a company that isn't taking human rights seriously. Nobody wants to have a supplier who profits from modern slavery. The problem is that it's hard to see. Suppliers aren't advertising that they're engaging in slavery-like practices. It's hidden in plain sight as an acceptable practice in the culture or simply given another name. Everyone who is trafficked is trafficked from a community to a community. The more those communities know about what modern slavery is and have the capacity to identify the signs, the less likely it is that human traffickers and people who are slave traders are able to operate. This is why due diligence is essential. Without it, you can become an unwitting supporter of slavery. The actions of businesses collectively will drive the change to address slavery on a large scale. Of the 100 top economies in the world, the income makers, 71 out of the top 100 economies are now businesses and corporations. And they're starting to realise that they have a responsibility to be able to help with the uh, well-being of workers and of nations that they are working in and sourcing from. 
The Modern Slavery Act helps everyone take action. It levels the playing field for those who are doing the right thing. All major companies have to report what they're doing to prevent slavery in their own company and all the places that make their products. The statement should address five key areas. Where do you operate? Show how your company is structured and where you and your supply chain operates. What risks of modern slavery do you face? Show the risks in your operations, your supply chains and in any other company you own or control. So how can you find out if there's issues in your supply chain? The first thing is you have to look. If you only want to show that there's no problems, that is what you will find. But if you are truly committed to finding out what is happening in your supply chain, you need to know where you are sourcing from, what's involved in those supply chains, all the way back to the end of the supply chain, and be willing to take actions to deal with what you're finding. What actions have you taken to assess and address the risks? Explain the steps you've taken and how you remediate any issues that you discover. In our case, we developed what we called an ethical sourcing roadmap, and actually that document's available on our website for anybody to use uh, as a basis for commencing. Uh, we developed a human rights statement and we developed a code of conduct for our suppliers. And we then simply sat down with our major suppliers and we said, look, we're not experts in this, you're probably not experts in this, but we're very, very serious about wanting to tackle this issue of modern slavery. We want to do it with you. Uh, let's talk about how we can work together. How do you assess the effectiveness of those actions? How do you consult with any other companies you control to prevent modern slavery? We need to remember that compliance to regulation is the minimum. There are countries where enforcement of regulation is weak, um, or even in countries where there is fair enforcement of regulation, um, business can do better. They can apply um, business industry standards. They also need to be partnering with suppliers and vendors to build their capacity, um, as well as listening to worker voices. We need this um, partnership integrated approach to tackle such a complex issue as modern slavery and supply chains. Modern slavery is happening in every country in the world, even Australia. It entraps more people than ever before in human history. We know that keeping slavery out of our products is the right thing to do. Our customers want it, our government demands it. More and more, this is becoming just the smart way to run a business. The slave trade has flourished because those involved believe that we only care about prices and profit, not people. When business makes it clear that we will not accept slavery in our supply chains, we can start to make a difference. We can raise working standards, we can take away their profits, and ultimately, we can make the slave trade unviable. We can end modern slavery in our lifetime.